Hello everyone, my name is Li Chao Wu. In this presentation, we will show our recent research, Reinforcement Learning for Hyperparameter Tuning in Deep Learning Based Large Channel Analysis. This is joint work with the Yorai Reistak, um, Gilhem Perrin, and Stefan Pisek. First, let's give a brief introduction about the side channel analysis. Assuming that we have a hardware running the encryption algorithm, we input plain text and we can get the cyber text at the output. However, during this in, uh, executions, uh, we will have the leakage we call it side channel leakage. It can come from the power domain or electromagnetic domain. Well, by analyzing this leakage, um, doing some mathematic stuff, um, we can actually retrieve the secret information and we call it side channel analysis. There are two types of uh, side channel attack. Um, non-profiled side channel attack and profiled side channel, side channel attack. For the profiling side channel attack, um, we assume that the attacker have the full control of the device, which means that they can collect both the traces and the labels during the executions. And we call this profiling traces and profiling labels. And by uh, collecting these two uh, data, two type of data, they can build the profiling models to map the relationship between the traces and labels. Well, I want to know that here the traces will mean the leakage traces. So um, by mapping these two, um, they can just simply do the attack by uh, fitting the attack traces that obtained from the attack device to the profiling models and ask the profiling models to predict do the predictions. And uh, when knowing the attack labels, they can do the simple calculations and the secret information that carried by the leakage can be retrieved easily. There are two um, popular uh, profiling side channel attack, template attack and deep learning attack. For the template attack, it's based on building the probability density function between uh, different clusters. Well, for the deep learning attacks, it's just map the relationship between the traces and labels by training a deep learning model. However, training a central model is not that uh, easy, especially designing such a model is really a difficult task. Uh, consider that we have different type of data set and we want to cut, we need to customize the deep learning model for each data set. It will be a really difficult, difficult task. And also we know that there are a lot of papers that represent, uh, present that using different networks can give us better performance than the other. And um, it's really difficult to uh, make the decision which um, hyperparameters or which network is better. So here we list uh, three uh, type of, uh, three category of the hyperparameters. The first one is the network types. We have the multi-layer perceptrons, convolutional neural network, and ResNet. The layer configurations, we have the convolutional layer, pooling layer, batch normalization layer, and this layer. And for the training configurations, which is also really important, we have learning rate, batch size, and training epoch. And uh, as an attacker or evaluator, it's really difficult to uh, find the optimal combina hyperparameter combinations of these uh, options and perform a good attack. And the goal of this paper is to automate this process, to simplify this process. And uh, the attacker and evaluator can use our uh, methodologies to apply our attack in the different data set. And um, we use the reinforcement learning, more specifically, le more specifically the Q-learning. Know that there are three uh, important notations, the state, which is S, the actions, which is A, and the reward, which is R. Let's start from the beginning. So the, we fit the state, current state to the action, uh, to, to the agent, and uh, based on the current state, the agent will take an action. The action will uh, influence the environment, so the environment will update to a new state, and also based on the current actions, the environment will give us a reward. And uh, we fit the state, the new state and the new reward to the agent again, and we start this loop. By, by this interactive process between the agent and the environment, the agent can know better and better about the environment. And finally, at a certain step, the agent can give us the optimal solutions about uh, the objective we set it to the agent. 
here is a simple example of how Q learning works. So uh, assuming that the agent is standing in the middle and the objective is moving to the right up corner, which is a green block, while getting the maximum reward. Know that for each block we have the reward. And uh, because the agent have no idea what the environment look like and no idea about the block, so uh, the agent need to explore this environment. So the initial state of the agent is a current position, and the agent take the actions. Actions in this uh, situations could be moving up, moving down, moving uh, right or right uh, or left. And uh, by taking such actions, the environment has changed, and uh, the agent has been have been moved to the new space, uh, new new uh, state. So, for example, we are moving left, and then the state will be the blocks on the left. And also, by moving left, we are uh, collecting a reward, and uh, the agent will going forward to a different with a different actions based on the current uh, state and the reward, and then. Um, finish this uh, iterations and start the next iterations. Know that for this um, uh, simple examples, we calculate the Q value, which stands for the qualities. Why we want to the Q values? Because we want to evaluate the quality of such state uh, with, with this uh, state action pair. For example, if we are moving right, we want to know if the quality of such movement is good or not. If it's a good movement, it's indicate or it's it's the Q value is high. It's indicate that um, this movement is pretty nice, and it may indicate that we can uh, achieve the our destination, which is a green block, and get a higher reward. And if the Q value is low, this means that probably this action is not that good enough, and probably we want to take a different actions. So how to calculate this Q value or how to update this Q value because we are doing this interactive process. Here is the equation. It seems that it seems this equation is complex, but it's really simple. Is this equation is based on the Bellman equations, and we have two um, blocks: the old Q value and learned Q value. The old Q value stand for the Q value we learned from the previous um, iterations. And the learned Q value is the value we learned from the current step. So for the learned Q value, we have two steps, as we mentioned before, the reward um, from the new state, and also the maximum uh, Q value that we can take actions in the current uh, in the in the new state. So um, by uh, up, uh, by balancing this old value and learned value with the learning rate Q learning rate alpha, we can uh, update this Q value. And also know that we have this discount factors, which determines the weight given to the short-term rewards over the future rewards. Please check our papers for more details. So um, we uh, demonstrate how the Q learning works, and we uh, know how to update the Q values. We can uh, simply uh, observe that the um, reward here is very important. No matter we are calculating the new reward, new Q value or updated Q value, this reward plays a really important role here. And um, this reward actually determines the objective. So what we really want to uh, optimize this reward for the side channel. And here is the reward uh, we are using. Uh, we, uh, so as you can see here, we use uh, four matrix uh, and uh, the detailed calculation is shown here. So the T stands for the percentage of the traces required to get the guessing entropy to zero out of the fixed maximum attack size. The GE10 stands for the guessing entropy value used 10% of the attack traces. The GE50 stands for the guessing entropy value using 50% of the attack traces. And finally, we use the accuracy. The accuracy stands for the uh, uh, accuracy of the network on the validation set. Also, we uh, designed a different uh, alternative reward function, which we call it reward small. The reason we designed this is because in the recent paper, there are research showing that the models can be uh, really small while performing really good. So uh, we also want our uh, Q learning process to find this uh, small but good models. 
So uh, by doing so, we uh, by doing this, uh, uh, we uh, design uh, uh, additional uh, metric, which is the p value, which stands for the trainable parameters. We set a threshold of the trainable parameters based on the state of art models, and then we subtract the state of art uh, the state of art trainable parameters with our um, selected network topologies. Higher p value means that our model is smaller. It gives us give, gives uh, gives added value added value to the reward. And the reward if the reward model is higher, it means that we can find uh, good performed and small models. Then we are by by knowing all of this background, we are showing the network searching method. We start by uh, sample the network topology and we train the network and finally we evaluate the model and update the Q value. We are doing this process again and again based uh, with the epsilon gradient schedule. The epsilon gradient schedule here uh, balance the exploration and exploitation. We uh, in the beginning of the search we set the epsilon to a higher value so the sampled network topology will be random and the agent can uh, better explore the searching space and then uh, when the agent knowing the evaluated better uh, know, knowing the environment better um, we uh, gradually decrease this epsilon value and then uh, the agent is moving from exploration to the exploitations and the, the agent will tend to uh, select uh, the topologies that gives higher q value or higher reward also, for uh, sampling the network topologies, we uh, customize uh, the, the, the or we uh, set the restrictions on the design the network. First, we set uh, the searching range, and also we limit the uh, number uh, limit the, the, the selected the selectable uh, uh, layers. For example, here we have the convolutional layer, pooling layer, fully connect layer, soft layer, and also. We have this batch normalization layer and gap layer. Know that these two layer are uh, shown in the late, late, uh, recent research and it performs really good. And so uh, we are uh, still add this to to the our uh, research or to our uh, searching space, and uh, probably it will give us uh, good uh, models. So um, we also set, as I mentioned before, we set the restrictions to the models. For example, uh, for the fully connected layer, we set we, we set the threshold so the number of the fully connected layer cannot exceed our threshold. For more details, please check our papers. So uh, compare with the normal uh, network design methodologies, our searching methodologies give small uh, possibilities on different. Um, type of layers, type of configurations, and probably it will give us a better result. We will show that in the experimental result part. So here, um, we uh, experienced our, uh, we, we test our, uh, our framework, uh, our searching method uh, with three public available data set, ASCAT fixed key data set, ASCAT random key data set, and chess CTF. For each data set, we are showing the searching overview, the benchmark with the state of art models, reward, and gets entropy. This is the result for the ASCAT fixed key data set. On the, right, on the left, it's showing the searching overviews. Um, first, we notice that we are experienced uh, different leakage models, the Hemingway leakage model and identity leakage model. And also, we test different reward functions. Uh, to understand this graph, the x-axis stands for the Q learning reward, the higher the better. Um, the y-axis stands for the trainable parameters of each model, the smaller the better. And uh, the, dot, the dot in the graph represent the topologies of the models. And you can see there are a lot of dot means that we have tested a lot of different topo topologies. And uh, we know that in a, in a, in a, the dot have different color. The color stands for the different, different epsilon values that we are in a different searching stage. Like for example, the exploration, ex exploitation. And the red cross here stands for the state of our models. And we are directly benchmark the state of our models with other models within our reinforcement learning framework. 
So from the result, we can see that the model on the right down corner performs better than the state of art model, and also it's, also it's smaller than the state of art models. So uh, both for both reward and reward small reward functions, it, we can get such models, and especially for the reward small functions, we can get plenty of such uh, of this uh, best performance models. So um, to do benchmark our uh, best models with the state of art research result, uh, we have the tables on the right. So um, here we highlight our result here, uh, our best model performance of our, our best model here. So clearly our model is way smaller than the state of art and performs better than it. So which shows uh, the, the efficiency of our uh, framework. Also, uh, to evaluate our uh, searching process, we also calculate the reward and the gas entropy of the best models. For the reward, we consider two terms, the rerolling uh, uh, average reward and uh, the average reward per epsilon. So for the rolling average reward, uh, we uh, calculate the average reward over uh, from the previous 50 iterations. And for the average epsilon, and for the epsilon uh, uh, average uh, reward per epsilon, we simply calculate the average reward for all of the models with a specific epsilon value. So here, from the um, plot on the left, we we see that for both cases with different reward functions, the uh, reward is getting higher and higher when the uh, epsilon is getting lower. It's, which means that our agent is really learning from the environment and when moving from exploration to exploitation, it can really generate the models that performs really good, uh, performs well on the data set we are testing. And also uh, on the right of the plot, we are showing the uh, guess the entropy of the best models from the search and uh, the result is pretty consistent to what we observed from the searching plan in the previous slide. Next, we are showing the Ascard uh, random key data set. Note that here we do not have the red cross, we stand for the state of art. However, we still uh, benchmark um, the, the reported result from the other papers with our result. Um, the searching process is kind of similar, but uh, the result still showing that we can find the good models, uh, really uh, uh, well-performed model, but the model is still with a limited size. So uh, pretty uh, amazing result. And also um, we're showing the reward, which is a reward similar to the previous uh, data set. So here um, we observe that for the heavyweight leakage model, the reward is going higher when the epsilon is decreased. While with the ID model, uh, it's, 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 it's going from the, to the different directions. So meaning that when the uh, reward is getting uh, getting smaller and the epsilon is getting larger. So uh, we assume that this is because that the model, our searching framework is stuck into the local optima and by uh, more searching the reward is getting smaller. However, our uh, solution would be that fitting the fitting more or providing traces when uh, doing the searching or the evaluations and probably it will solve the problems. And also we're showing the gas entropy here. Again, it performs really consistent uh, compared, to what we, uh, compared to what we uh, observed before. Finally, we show the chest CTF dataset. Here we only show the hybrid leakage model because this dataset do not leak, leak much ID uh, leakage. So uh, from the result, uh, the, uh, uh, for both searching result and uh, the reward, it's pretty uh, normal, well, as expected, because the reward is getting higher and when the epsilon is getting smaller, we are finding uh, better models. And uh, for the result, uh, our uh, best CNN and best CNN for the, with the reward small models, our model is the smallest, well, performs the best. And the gas entropy confirms our, uh, our statement. Okay, um, let's move to the conclusion and the future works. In this paper, we propose the reinforcement learning uh, framework that enables automate, 
automated and powerful search for the for the providing side channel analysis. We motivate and develop uh, customer reward functions for the hyperparameter tuning in side channel, and we demonstrate the effectiveness of our method with different datasets. For future work, it would be interesting to investigate the deep Q learning paradigm performance, and we would like to know how would the best model obtained through the reinforcement learning behaves in the ensembles of models. And also, we want to uh, learn better about our searching framework uh, in uh, when, when, when searching for other type of network, for example, the multilayer perceptual. Thanks for your attention.